Okay, good one. That one is good to keep. Now here comes the next one. This is an important. The Buddha in Majjhima Nikaya 19 said something very important, very essential, and even beautiful. Uh, in whatever, the, not the monk, but the practitioner, all of us, in whatever the people, the person, inclines his mind or her mind, in that he becomes, period. Whatever you read, you become what you read. Whatever you see on the computer, on the TV, or on the phone, you become that. So sometimes when family sends funny or silly memes, we become that silliness because that's what the mind is becoming. I understand the content. The mind just became that. So we need to be very careful about all that, right? We need to be careful about what kind of food we are giving to our minds. Very important. So now the Buddha said that and here comes a thing. That is in our pocket for not long ago, for a few years now, <laughs> it has been in our pockets. When the ones that are in autumn, we didn't have a phone when we, when we were young, isn't it? We, we didn't. Sometimes even the home didn't have phone. <laughs> but now we have everybody, we have something like this in the pocket. And I check online, and in average, we are opening the phone minimum 30 to 90 times and I am sure that we open it sometimes even more than that a day. So what did the Buddha says? In whatever the, the, the person inclines his mind, in that he becomes. So I will ask you, what is the background of your phone? What photo do you have in the background of your phone? Because you will be looking at that phone many times, at that image many times. So here comes a nice trick that I started using. Anyway, if I'm going to see the phone many times a day, these are the backgrounds that I designed for myself. So I have this one, this is one, I have many, I will show you a few. You remember how we started? Oh, we are floating, turning in the galaxy. We will, we will born and die floating, wow. And the universe is huge, wow. My problems are very small. Yes, one image symbolizes that. So when you open the phone 30 times a day, this message will consciously or unconsciously come to your mind. You see how useful? Now, instead of having a constant distraction as it is, now we will upgrade our phones. Oh, my dear, you will not be the one who distracts me. From now on, you will be my closest. Kalyanamita. Ah, upgrade. This is a good upgrade. Now, instead of having a, a source of distraction, a source of unwholesomeness, we will have a source of mindfulness. For example, look at this one. Wow, very nice. Now, I will show you some of them. I use this one. You can make your own. Be creative. Have fun with them. So this is for me when I feel too narrow, too worried about my pro problems. Anyway, it's very easy to change the background, isn't it? Very easy. Change the background according to your needs. If the mind is tight and, and, and small, put the perspective one. Now I show you just a few examples of the old one. If I want to develop loving kindness and gratitude, I made this one. Here is my father, of course the Buddha himself and all my teachers. Do you recognize some familiar faces there? So here is my mama, my papa, my sisters, my Kalyanamitas, and the ones that are in black, black and white, they already died. So it's also a reminder that even people, uh, friends of mine, younger than me, they passed away. So this is a very powerful uh, image for me. So immediately I feel gratitude, my father, my mother, my three sisters, my teachers, my, my Dhamma brothers. And so when I see this picture 30 times a day, believe me, you come back with gratefulness, you come back with love, and also a reminder that even this teacher, you know, he was a Tipitaka Dara, and when the COVID hit few, two years ago, he died. Such a brilliant mind. Samsara has no mercy. Samsara doesn't choose. Okay, I will keep this one because it's very wise. No. I will keep this one because it's very cute. No. Samsara has no mercy. So when I see this image, wow, I have some Kalyanamitans, monks, nuns. So just by doing so, it's very easy to do. Just go to, to the WhatsApp and you, down, you take a photo of the, of the photo they have on Facebook. And then you just go to Word and just put all the photos there. And you have it. I, I, I didn't have it. I have it printed out. I didn't bring it now. It's on the computer back. I also have it printed. So I don't need the phone. I put it. 
Even when I go to the cave in SBS, I put there, it's the first thing I pack because it's a re constant reminder of kindness, meta, and the reality of life. Simple to do, I totally recommend it for all of us. Now, this one, Why? when do I use this one? When do you think I use this one? Here comes. When I am in the jungle, the only thing that you have contact in the jungle, what is it? Trees, monkeys, uh, I don't know, the river. So the mind in the jungle in SBS, very easy to be, to be free from, hmm, from distractions. But when you come to the city, you arrive to the airport or they bring you to the shopping center because you need a USB cable or whatever. Wow, the airport and the, and the shopping center is filled with objects. Of, att of attractive objects. And then when you arrive there, wow, the mind starts, wow, wow, that's wow, they're really beautiful. They're very beautiful, very beautiful, very beautiful, <laughs> oh, very beautiful, everything. So I change this one. And even if it looks very beautiful, I remind myself, well, actually, yes, it looks beautiful, but actually it's made out of bones, it's made out of muscles, and it's not so beautiful when you look at that. So it's a reminder of the reality. This is a for monks, eh? careful that eh? you're talking to a monk. You, 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 you make your own, your own pre uh, precautions. <laughs> you're talking a monk. The Buddha gave this asuba practice. And I have some that are more, a little bit more intense to remind you not to follow there. And I have another trick. I will pass you. This one is very effective. You remember the Buddha says, don't follow details. You remember when you look at something beautiful, don't follow the details so the mind doesn't generate uh, negativity. I use one trick which is uh, it's very hard to do but very effective. You know what? When I go to the airport or to the shopping mall, this is what I do. <laughs> don't follow any details. Wow, wonderful. I don't crash with people. Really, I cannot recognize your faces now. <laughs> really. I know there are many people I can't. So I go, oh, so peaceful. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so this is very effective to use in airports. So you know many tricks. Now the next one, I have a confession to do to you all because you are my family, Dama family. I have a confession. Actually, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody got really interested in it. And one day, she's actually not just my girlfriend, she's my fiance. We are going to get married sooner or later. So here I would, I would like to introduce my sweetheart. <laughs> this is one that I use very often. Seat belts, ne? Seat belts, seat belts. It's a monk. It's a it's a monk's fault, ne? So here is my sweetheart. Ready? <laughs> so this one I use it often when I come to the city. So you see, she's ready for wedding. When you look at her hair, it's perfectly done. Amazing, ne? Her hair. You, she even has this thing around. How you call this one? The hairband like this, she's with the flowers and she's waiting for me. One day we will get married. So this is a very good one to remind me two things. Actually, what looks beautiful right now, from now and some years, it will not be so beautiful. And the next thing that it reminds me is in the same way as the Buddha says, in the same way as she is, I have the same nature and I will pass. Can I waste time? Can you see how your phone can become a very good Kalyanamita? We just need to be creative. Use it. You will see this 30 or 90 times a day. Put whatever you need in the moment. Make it dynamic. I am experiencing lust. I put this one. I am experiencing anger. I bring metta. I am experiencing narrowness. I bring perspective. So your phone really will become your best friend. I use this one a lot. I've put images that inspire you. And just by thinking of the Buddha, oh, you were like, what time is it? Where, what time we need to go? And suddenly you open, oh, sad. And then you just look, oh. And you take a moment, a moment. Or you put your teacher. Or you put people you love. That's it. Careful with attachment. But I think the point is made. We make, we will make, okay, I ask you better. Will you make your phone your best Kalyanamita? Yes. Deal? Yes. yes, you did it with a monk, eh? you know. So here we go. Oh. Next one is, there are apps that can, the mindfulness app that you can uh, set up how many times a day you wish them to 
remind you to be mindful. So they will give a ring or you can use your, your own, uh, uh, sorry, I need to go back this one. You can use your own uh, alarms. So you can set them up, for example, in lunchtime, you know that it will not disturb you while you are, and then lunchtime, tee, 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 and you just put mindfulness, ah, okay. And then you will take one, a few breaths or even one minute before when you arrive home, etc., etc. you got the point, you can download apps already or you can use the, the uh, alarms. And what you will do, instead of being outside with the attention in, you will bring the radar into your body, into your mind for one minute and you anchor again with the breath or with any physical sensation, simple. We know how to do. So your phone will be telling you, come on, come back, come back. And believe me, you will forget but your phone will not. <laughs> so you actually have a very good friend. Oh, I love you. I love you. Hey, my precious. Hey, we're also very attached to it. So anyway, we need to improve our relation with this phone. Have you left the phone in your home and then you come out and then you, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And then you find it in the back. My pre, my precious, my precious. Hey, so careful with attachment. This is how it is. Eh? If that happens with a machine, imagine your children, imagine your home. When the Buddha says we have a lot of attachments, he was right. He was right. And we need to be careful. Good. We are coming almost to the end. Next one. This is very important, my dear family. And I will read. Our consciousness cannot be in the hands of the impulses of others. It's something too precious to live in the hands of the impulses of others. Do you agree? Here comes another one. Our happiness cannot be in the hands of the impulses of others. Why am I saying this? Let's make ourselves a favor. Please, Turn off the notifications in your phone. Because sometime you will be in your minute of awareness and suddenly, bling, bling. Oh, my cousin is, is taking breakfast, uh, eggs and, and bread. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Or you are working and you are working and pling pling oh my auntie sent this me <laughs> well, sorry boss what, are, what, what were you telling so you see are we going to leave our consciousness our work and our happiness in the hands of the impulses of others no my dear family i did this years ago and believe me it was one of the best decisions i have ever made i turned the notifications all the notifications off and it's not difficult to do and in case you don't know, ask your younger sibling or, or son and turn them off. And I will tell you this. You might say, no, Bante, but I'm a very busy person. I need a phone. Actually, I have three phones and I am like this. So my boss needs to call. Okay, you make your own arrangements. But I will ask you something. I will invite you to turn your notifications of your phone for one week. Do it for me, would you? Do it for one week. You will use your phone as much as you need and as much as you want, but let the decision be taken by you, not by your cousin living in the other side of uh, in, in Penang. No, don't let the people make you look at your phone. You need to look at your phone. Look at it as many times as you need. Check your messages as many times as you need, but when you want to do it, when you say, okay, now it's time to check the messages and then you take it and you are in control. I tell you, what do you want? Do you want to be in control of your phone or you want the phone to be in control of you? Pick one. Pick one. I will say we better take control. Try it for me. Try it for me. Please do it. Even a few days. Try it. And after you try, you check your mind state. How is my mind? After I'm not being distracted all the time with silly things very often and I'm taking control of this. Would you do that? Would you? Please do so. Just try it as an, exam as an experiment. Believe me, it really, really works. You will take back, turn the notifications, and that's it. Okay, we are get reaching the, the, the edge. Two more to go. Everybody okay? You have energy? We finish? Okay. The next one is <laughs> recognizing our blessings. Every day, 
just to remember that we are alive, we are healthy, we have home, we have clothing, food, medicine, family, friends, education, access to information, even time and money to take vacations. We are very fortunate. If these things become invisible, not even the Buddha can do something for you. Nobody can do something for you. If we stop seeing, if our blessings become invisible, we are lost. Isn't it? Then desire will come up because we don't recognize what we already have. Desire will want and want and want. And we will be always thirsty, always in a loss, always missing something. So please every day make it a habit when you wake up or before you go to bed, remember how fortunate we are and the mind will be content. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. The mind will be content because the mind, gratitude sees what we do have and desire obsesses with what we don't have, right? So what we're going to do, make it a habit. And I will encourage you in your Kalyanamita, in your phone, now you will make a list of all the things that you are grateful for. And whenever you see your mind with desire or uh, grumpy or negative, you take your phone out and start reading, wow, my family is healthy. I have a home. I, am, I can see. I am not blind. I can walk. Then you will feel so rich. No need for all the things we desire will pass away. This is very important one. And for many people with depression, very often, this is the cure. Just this. <laughs> Isn't it? So this one, and make the list either in paper or your phone, you know. And this is the last one. We, make, we went through the day. Now it's time for you to go to bed. Soon it's going to be go to bed. So instead of just going thinking, oh, tomorrow I have to do this, uh, this and that, we will come back and just stay there. And I will recommend you to keep a good book beside your bed. One good example will be the Dhammapada. Or I said, something that is short. So before sleeping, you just read one verse or make a selection of your favorite verses and just keep them beside. You read one so you will have a wonderful companion. And before you go to bed, you will read one. Ah, you will think, bring things into perspective. Keep one good book beside. And the next thing to do will be send blessings to your family. Meta. Remember your parents, mama, papa. Already you're lying down. Ready for bed? Ah, Mama, Papa, thank you very much. Wherever you may be, may you be healthy, may you be at peace. And then you go to your children. Mm. May you be well, may you be free to your grandchildren, brothers and sisters. You start blessing people. Like a, not like blessing, like as we know in the West, but just meta to everybody. And then another thing you will remember is all the goodness you have done. The generosity you have performed, your sila, all the service you have done for others. Let me know what kind of dreams you will have. You let me know tomorrow. <laughs> if your last thought is blessing your family or remember your wholesomeness and kindness, imagine what kind of sleep you will have. So please do so. These three companions, a good book, Dharma book, I will suggest, Blessings to your family, loving kindness, loving kindness towards yourself, and remember your wholesomeness. Even if your mind complains and criticizes you, you will bring the facts. No, darling, I am also a decent and upright human being. Sweet dreams. Mm -hmm. Have sweet dreams and you will wake up refreshed. And of course, how can I give love to others if I don't love myself, isn't it? So before you go to bed, yeah, you can do, I do sometimes. You know, most we live alone. Hey, hey, I hug myself. <laughs> so, ah, uh, very good. Ah, I can do check. I can. But sometimes to the hand, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, let's thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. More, 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 more. Yeah. And then go like this. And then you do tap. We actually have nervous endings here that receive that. And you just do like this when you are worried a little bit. You know monkeys, they, they take the, the fleas like this. And don't do that to your friends, man. <laughs> don't do. But yes, why do you think they do this? Is to show I am here. I am here. I am with you. I can, I'm looking in your back. You are protected. We have even nervous terminations here that are this message of wellness 
it's triggered. So if you come to a friend, why do you come a friend and do like this? You see, we can do even if it works with ourselves. So give yourself a hug just like this. Love yourself because if we don't have for me, I cannot do for you. How can I give something I don't have? <laughs> so love starts within, cultivation inside. And lastly, to finish, please, I said it before, be creative with the Dhamma. Be creative, play, enjoy. And lastly, the last one is, please have fun, even with the Dhamma. Having fun doesn't mean that we are disrespectful. No, having fun is, I am enjoying it. I want to do it because it's fun. So be creative, have fun, respectfully. Yes, of course, I know all what I need to do, the noble eightfold path and everything. I'm doing it, but I'm finding ways. And I hope you, you we explore today some examples. Enjoy the process. Because sometimes we are, oh, the Dhamma, I have to go beyond the right effort. <laughs> you see, I'm very happy, I'm practicing the Dhamma. <laughs> wow, you see, <laughs> so happy I was, you see? So happiness, or sometimes people come, you know, you should practice the Dharma. It will make you very happy. <laughs> Can you see this? And then you look at that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> you. So, you see, I'm not advocating for disrespect at all. I have fun, we can relax. And the Buddha spoke pity and sukha. Piti and Sukha are on the highest strata of our mind. Joy and happiness are not luxuries, are indispensable spiritual tools. If we are not happy doing something, we will do it half-heartedly. Do we want to be happy? Be happy! <laughs> let's get joy, let's be creative, have fun with the Dhamma respectfully. And I think the Buddha will say, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.